exactly the easiest minion to deal with as a priest. Yeah, for sure. And Unless you draw into a string meister with Shadow Pain. Pain. Yeah. But this is gonna be two turns late though. <laughs> <laughs> because of Innervate. Yeah. So it's kind of Okay, well, well it'd still um... be kinda okay straight. You uh well it actually would be a really good with trade. the coin. Yeah. Because you Oh, there's the Shadow Word Pain. There's yeah, the there. Shadow Word Pain. Never mind okay. me. So it will Never be a trade me. two for one. Because uh, there will be a Yeti and an Innovate for just the Shadow Word Pain. Because there yeah, will be actually, a creature in, yeah, in the really. priest uh, board. So yeah, that's really... This Yeti is going to backfire works. really hard here on Carlos because he doesn't know that on turn three, Faramir will just coin out Shrinkmeister Shadow Word Pain. It's D2, man. It's D2. Oh, D2, yeah, I keep saying Faramir because I keep reading Faramir. <laughs> Sorry, D2, I, I keep misnaming you because you have a friend the called that, playing you. your account. Oh, he heals the, the light shall burn you. Oh, yeah, the, the typical BM, except it doesn't do anything. So now uh, D3 is nothing, it's just your yeah. power. And turn 3 for, for D2 is really awesome. Can yeah, it's going to give him a lot of swing. And turn four will be most probably the keeper to kill the Shrinkmeister, right? I think keeper is a bit better because otherwise Holy Smite risks killing your Yeti, which actually has the Holy Smite in his hand. D2 has it, so that would be a little bit of a worry on Carlos' mind. Um, and it's hmm. better to get our Keeper of the Grove out there before Cabal Shadow Priest comes out. Might as well get it out of the way before he steals some kind of 2-4. Um, Spectral Knights are being run by Carlos, so a much more standard, you know, aggressive Druid deck. Uh, reminiscent of what I think Firebat was running a while back. Actually, a lot of players have been running this, quite frankly. Shade of Nax, Spectral Knights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The old build. S Spectral Knights are really good uh, against Priest, but well, there's a chance. Yeah. Shrink Meister, Cabal Shadow Priest. But one of the Shrink Meisters is gone right now. So, so that's definitely. less likely to happen. Dark Cultist with Power Shield. And... Very powerful play here. It still doesn't really achieve much because. The Dark Cultist has three points of attack, and there will be a Spectrum Knight there. So even without a Pyromancer, you're not able to clear this board anyway. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, actually, Carlos has a pretty nice follow-up here, curve-wise, because his turn seven is guaranteed to be Angel of Lore pretty much 99% of the time. Yeah. Uh, like, it doesn't make any sense. He's got one piece of the combo. He can probably get the Priest down a little bit lower on health. Which is going to be just enough to maybe reach for lethal very early, depending on what he top decks here. The problem is that Carlos will have to go face with everything he has. Mm -hmm. He has just yeah. to ignore the creatures to win this game, I think. Basically, yeah, because the priest has been in the position of like he's been able to stabilize with that shrink meister shadow word pain. Yeah. If that hadn't been the case, it would have been a different story. But because of that shrink meister coin shadow word pain, it was actually very effective. And uh, oh. yeah, Raph nice. doesn't do much this time no both creatures are more than three points of hp if the second power world shield didn't drop it was really, really nice that, that Ralph was drawn now, right now uh, in this situation he could swipe wrath actually he could attack he could swipe the dark cultist attack the north Shire cleric and then finish off the cultist with wrath mm -hmm. I think although like i can't well. say it's like the the most effective play in the universe but it's definitely going to let him maintain tempo of this because, like, there's nothing that can remove the Spectral Knight in the immediate sense. Even yeah. Alcanized Soul Priest doesn't do it. Okay, so Shadow Man is, is useless mm -hmm. for now. One Shrink Meister was used, so there's no chance of actually using it uh, on a National of War or Yeti or whatever it will be played. So, Thought Steal here is probably a play you make uh, most of the time because you want to at least see what you can get from it before deciding whether you want to heal. Oh, sorry. Or sure. so he picked up a Shade of Nax. I don't know exactly how relevant that's going to be. Um, well, you can play it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Savage Roar, you can kill a Spectral Knight next turn. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you 5 damage to kill off that pesky thing. Oh, oh. do well, you. Which do you play now? I don't know. I think Ash of the Lord. I think yeah. Ash of the Lord. Well, that was tempting, though. The Shade of Nax Drama's Yeti here allowed him to set up a really nice Force of Nature Savage Roar if he found it in his deck. Second so that Ash of the Lord, man. Nice. Will he actually use it next turn? Vol'jin, okay. Ah, I didn't think of Vol'jin as a new tool to deal with Spectral Knights, but that definitely would help uh, in some circumstances. 
Yeah, you can you smack a really small minion into it. And well, you don't have so... to. Yeah, it avoids you know you having to trade away your. Uh, I mean, to use your uh, Shadow Savage War here, you can just Vol'jin trade, and your Vol'jin will kill the Ancient of Lore. Because it is a 5-5. Is, does D2 use uh, Shadow of Death? Because if he doesn't... He does then... not have Shadow of Death. But if he uses it at all, like in his deck... Okay, might... yeah, no. if he's got in his deck, okay, yes. Um, quite frankly, I have no idea. But he runs two Shadow Word Pains, so he's probably been playing a lot around uh, with the Shrink Meister, right? Shrink Meister, Shadow Word Pain, this, kills 5 attack. This resembles the uh, Amaz deck from Kingdom Tournament, and that deck didn't have any uh, any amount of Shadow Word deaths. And in it? Had, yeah. It had two Accommodulators, two Shrink Meisters, two Shadow Word Pain. No, so one Shadow Word Pain, but two Shadow Madness. Stuff like that, so. Oh no, another Spectral Knight from Carlos here. D2 is not gonna be super happy about that. Well, one. the Spectral Knight is really bad against the Vulture. But... Yeah, but he can just kill the Vulture with a 5 5. Do you do he... that? You can just play second version of Rogue or Face. You're vulnerable to Shadow or Death after that point, and holy fires, though, aren't you? Well, I mean, I you, think... you might be right, actually. You could go Face and just wait for Force of Nature, Savage War. I think you're right, actually. It makes a lot more sense to yeah. just ignore the board and force the priest to try to trade in some way. D2 had to use both board sheets, so there's no way, unless there's like a buff from Valen's Chosen, to make the Vulture bigger to trade and then be he be, uh, to, to be healed. So yeah. I think going face was more important. Oh, this is so such a reactive play here from the priest. I mean, he doesn't have the choice. But it's just an awkward position. I keep saying awkward uh, because that's the best way I can comprehend this position. Every single move he's made so far has been defensive in nature. And the priest, I mean, the druid is just flooding the board. Two four creatures yeah. and one is untargetable. So. I mean, he would need. Actually, there's. He would need Circle of Healing twice. <laughs> or, yeah, draw. this. And would, yeah, exactly. Oh, no, he has draw. And it's, um, we played Harrison Jones for nothing, yeah, and... Harrison, for, I mean, Akinai for nothing, just to contest board. Oh, that's harsh. Lothep, oh And wow. now Lothep to seal this. Uh, well, you can play Ragnaros too. Okay, if you play Ragnaros, there's a risk of mind control in your near well, future. You Possibly, just... but, because, yeah. You could ignore that. But I feel you like Lothep play... and Drew of the Claw to face is yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. Really appealing here. Then again, well, you then, might be worried about circle. Then maybe you use a uh, low tap and one shade of next run as use a hero power, kill with the Yeti, the Alkanai, and go for four damage to face. Yeah, just set up a little kill on the Alkanai to make sure there's no circle problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think that's that's the idea that Carlos is having right now. Yeah, and D the thing is, D2 after Lothab really can't do much. Like, he's got no follow-up really after this, because he needs spells to wipe the board, but those are locked out. Oh, okay. oh wow, he wipes the board completely. Oh, he... Playing very oh, yeah. safe okay. here. He's it makes the... sense. I was thinking about leaving the House and Jones, but maybe that's better, okay? Because then you don't Let's lose see. Lothab. Yeah, but now you can't really play anything. Yeah, there's Dark Cultist and Akinai. He will be at 24 points of health, so if... How much points of damage is that? That's 9, 12, 18 points of damage. That's not enough to become evil. So, draw. That's close yeah. enough, though. You play Ragnaros here, right? I think you could you could play Ragnaros very happily. I mean, there's well, again, the only drawback would be a mind control effect, but I mean that doesn't even put you that far back behind because you've got BGH. Yeah, like, exactly. yeah, there's nothing there that really worries you, no matter what. So Ragnaros is a solid play this turn. Really solid play. I could get behind through the claw. Yeah, I don't know. I could get behind many plays here. There's definitely multiple plays that make sense, but Rag puts the most pressure. You have to expect him not to run Shadow or Death if you've seen uh, what he's played. Oh, he's clearing. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the guy's going down to 10 health anyway, right? So all you have to do next turn is 
Force of nature, bring him down. Four. So it's gonna be, you just need one more minion alive next turn. And you can always sound sound your own Ragnaros. Very easily. No way ah. of with that Ragnaros. Without Shadow of Death, Bruce is actually... Death Shadow of Madness and Nova would wipe this board. Um, yeah, but that's not gonna be enough to survive though, because he still dies to Force of Nature. I mean, do you you have to know where for the extra health, I guess. But that still doesn't help you too much. Yep, you die. You're still dead. Yeah, you're dead to so many cars and Druids are. Oh no, Wild Girl! Wild Girl won. Oh the no! It was drawn Warlock. right now. That's the perfect moment for that. He just threw the Wild Girl. No! Oh my God! Wild Girl's turn ten, guys. This is unbeatable. How do you deal with the Wild Girl's turn ten? Okay, After so After that Druid... innervate Yeti. And uh, Druid is 4-0 in round 2. In round 2 so far, yeah, it's been 3 games for Dogs Druid, and again for Carlos getting a first win. Innervate Yeti and his 3 cards, so we're still primo again. Oh. And here it comes. <laughs> oh man, is it turn 2 Spectral Knight? It is, it really is. And it's not gonna be fun for that Warlock. Although, this is one of those situations where you have to make the judgement call, because if Molten Giants come down too early, the thing is, this deck runs double combo, as far as I'm aware, mm -hmm. and um, that's one of the easiest ways to race Warlock. Well, you can do two ways. You can play Shadow Maximus in two into Spectrum Knight turn like three, three, or the other way around. Yeah. Shadow Max might be a bit more of a safe play because you get turn three Spectral, turn four Yeti now that you top deck the Yeti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the great curve, and you're building. A really strong board. That if if Carlos draws into a keeper in the next two draws. Oh no, that would be that would be like he could actually just kill out Twilight Drake right away, and there would be no no opposition from D two for a long time now. Yeah. Wow. So now you play the Spectrum Knight for sure. I, mean, I can't imagine any other player really. Yeah. And go face with those three points of damage, I think you do. A dark bomb is a bit too risky, so you probably just pass and wait. Oh, he no, just no, goes face, okay, go. never mind. Alright. Like, if yeah, dark if bomb he uses no a trade. dark bomb, then, yeah, then there's no minion to interfere with your plans. So it's yeah. kind of okay with you. Interfere with your plans. Evil the druids having plans <laughs> to dominate the world today. Oh, big game hunter, oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is incredible. All right, so we're looking at a warlock on 15 health, turn four against a deck that is supposed to be somewhat slow. Um, <laughs> I can't, I don't know what to think. So we're looking at. I mean, what do you play here? Do you have to play anti killbot? Because he does have you, you know eight so? health, three cane. Wow. Because molten giant is better, but if it gets played, there's no way he comes back from this. Oh man, I, I he doesn't he know it. I think he won't heal because uh, he has that Molten Giant. If he plays heal, then the, the Molten Giant will not be playable. And it'll be like... played next turn, because <laughs> yeah. you're still going to go down again. But it won't be enough. You will get 8 points of damage only, so you'll be still at 15. And at turn yeah. 6, you can't play Molten Giant with a Taunt, so it doesn't make really sense. So if you kill Shade this turn, let's say you kill Shade this turn with the, dra the Drake, then you play anti heal bot. Next turn he goes face and he attacks you for 8. Mm. He probably doesn't do that. He probably just taunts up. So no, I don't think it. so. You're right. Never mind. It doesn't make any sense at all. He taps yeah. into a dark bomb. Oh wow! That doesn't help him at all. So he has to use yeah power seal. Yeah, and actually. So now. Oh no. Mm, this is tough call. He can. Wouldn't you actually now kill the creatures and not go face? He can't go, he can't Shadow Flame and Ragnaros is auto lethal. Okay, so. The best he can do here is Taunt That's a Sun up, Fury, right? so you know, you play a Molten Giant and Taunt up and that's it. Yeah. I mean, the and... thing is, Big Game Hunter, like, he, he... D2 might be playing around some kind of Black Knight if he doesn't Taunt mm -hmm. up the Molten. Like, I could see him do that, but either way, Big Game Hunter is going to take care of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it, is, this, is this game, actually? No, it's not. There's Dog Bomb. No, actually, it might be game. 
This is ridiculous. Because he taunts up... He has to use Coil, but he can't. So he has to Sun Fury, the two biggest minions. Right? He doesn't have enough mana for the anti kill bot on top. And if if he actually plays Taunt on the Giant, then he loses. He loses the game, exactly. So he has to kill a Spectral Knight with a little 3-3 three, three and the 4-1, then Taunt up the two remaining minions. And then and... he will just get 9 points of damage from that. But he's still dead, right? Yeah, he's still dead. Oh, wait, no. If he uh, plays the game Hunter, Hunter taunt. with Taunt and... Not on the giant. Oh, he can't okay, play no, BGH no. because he's got a giant in the play. Oh, right. All right. Yeah, he okay. couldn't play the BGH. So oh, it's game. over now. It's game. Yeah, oh, BGH, two hero power. It's insane. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely crushing. That's 5 0 for Druids in round 2. Yeah. Um, wow. And you know what? I think if I think uh, D2 wanted to play the big game Hunter and taunt it up. But he couldn't do it because he actually played his own giant first. Shield Maidens, you know, they have a lot more survivability. Um, that's given them a little bit more reach or ability to survive a bit longer. Uh, to say that they're going to be able to stabilize in the mid game. Was Carlos the one running Harrison Jones earlier? Or was uh, that someone else? Because I remember sure. a Druid... Too many like, Druids, man. Too many Druids. Yeah, we've seen many Druids and I think one of them was running Harrison Jones. This might be the one. Oh wow, the perfect curving here for Carlos again. Turn, turn three. for Yeti. Yeah, you Turn mean. three Yeti even. Turn three Yeti, yeah. yeah. Then yeah. Spectral Knight or Low Tip, and then Spectral Knight or Low Tip, and then National Yeah, it seems yeah. nice. And there's actually no no weapon right now in the D2's hand to actually contest with this, so he might have to just shield block, coin, shield slam. It's still okay. Yeah, it's still a very nice play, honestly. Oh, oh he gets wow. this shield slam. Okay, fine. This may not be over yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wow. this is very nice for him right now. Do you play and the Shield uh, Maiden as well. Or Spectral Knight? What do you think? I think he plays Spectral Knight because, uh, then again, I mean, what's the point of Lothar here? What does she really prevent? It dies to Death Blight, I guess? Or. I'm, I'm not really sure. Why I feel like Spectral Knight could have been a decent play as well. Hey, hmm. Interesting. I think. Spectrumite will also achieve the same thing because uh, now he wants to kill the armor smith? Oh no. Because... He wants to remove the armor before anything else comes down. Um, but he doesn't know that the, you know, D2 has should... another shield, sla uh, shield block in hand, so that's going to help him a lot. That double shield block shield slam is the MVP here. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I uh, with an execute, the, there might be another line of play, but I feel like... This is pretty straightforward. You can use, you know, Death Bite later on to finish off the Spectral Knight if necessary. Hmm. You could try to draw a card with the Echo of Pain on the Spectral Knight. Oh. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. He but might not even have... Yeah, he might... Generates. Armor and he's gonna be able... If he smacks the Armor Smith and the Echo of Pain, he won't even need to... I think you use the weapon here. You smack well, down. What about what about fiery war? Okay, you attack Acolyte of Pain and Armor Smith into Spectral Knight, then you shield slam Lothab, then you fiery war axe down the Spectral Knight. Mm, That's guaranteed to kill that. it, and you wipe you wipe the board guaranteed. Well, you guarantee more card draw with the this type of play. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. It's just to wipe the board, it would have been. More. Okay, yeah, the warrior has definitely stabilized right now. Oh, yeah, and the board again, shield block, shield slam, doing a lot of work. Hey, the Druid's hand is pretty good, but the Warrior's hand as well. Could this be just the way to kill Druid? You just play Warrior? Hmm. Is this a secret? Sylvanas. Okay. It's going to give uh, Carlos a little bit of a headache soon. Now the Ancient Lord goes down. And D2. Very comfortable position. Does he develop his weapon or just armor up? Because he could have a decent follow up with minions next turn. I think developing the weapon, weapon is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's uh, You're right. more interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. Big Hunter, okay. So... <laughs> Does he have to just go face here and I think so. do, do the best? Because he does have two swipes. So when he does, if he does find a, 
Because, I mean, the, the warrior here may well, kill the minion with his weapon, so... What do you think about playing the Druid of the Claw in Taunt mode? It's not... Well... He's already played two shield blocks, so that could make some sort of sense. Uh, but he's got weapon and acolyte pin execute, so you might get zero value out of it. If an execute is in his hand, you're just gonna get nothing at all. And yeah, that's really right. problematic. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Double Belcher, now this is really important. The Belcher's got, yeah, I mean, he's got double, so going through that as Carlos, which... Uh, I mean, Shade of Nax can sit here for a while, until Sylvanas comes out, right? Like, there's no way for him right now to activate Sylvanas on his own. He's already used two Shield Slams, so he can't Shield Slam his own Sylvanas. So, Shade could sit there for a while, until a Brawl comes out at best. So D2 kills the 4-3 uh, here, which makes a lot of sense, and develops the Sylvanas to threaten the board and say, if you're going to play something big, then I'm going to steal your shade, so be careful. Hmm. Alright, Scenario's coming out with a bunch of taunts, actually. That is Savage War top deck here could be devastating, because right now he cannot go through the kill Scenarios. Mm, well, he will actually, I lied. Yeah, that's, that's not enough. Cowl. He could Iron B. Cowl a 2-2, two -two, um, attack a 2-2 two -two with his weapon, smack Sylvanas into Scenarius, and that would and, steal yeah, either a 2-2 yeah, yeah. or the Shade or Scenarius. You think he thing would do is, that and then play Shield Maiden? I don't think it's a very strong play, honestly. I think it's acceptable, but just not very optimal. I, I think it's fine, but just not great. I'd rather develop a Sludge Belcher and kill just a 2-2 two -two with Sylvanas. It's a lot more threatening. Yep, there it is. Now, Keep of the Grove Savage Roar is a bit of a problem. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Double swipe here. What do you do with double swipe? I'm not sure. Swipe the 3-5, use your hero power to finish it off. Then... A Keeper would be nice for sure, but there's no Keeper. He's got a Force of Nature, so Savage Roar is really just one card away from really bursting down that warrior. Could you double swipe face right now to get incredible... No? No, you have to swipe. Armor Swipe Armor yes. Smith Hero Power, that's it. Okay. And play Yeti, I think. Well, it sucks because. Mm. Sylvanas is just. Well, the thing is, right now, if you don't play Yeti, you're guaranteed to have no board next turn. Yeah. Because he attacks scenarios, then he steals the shade, and you've got literally nothing at all. Whereas now, a Force of Nature Savage Orc could win you the game if there is no taunts in the deck. That would be but a there second is... Belcher, which would be devastating for the Druid. Mm -hmm. And there's Shield Maiden and Sylvanas, like, uh, and Alex Straza, sorry. There's a lot of options here for D2 to just stick in this game and stay here for a while. Um, it's going to be very tough, actually, for uh, Carlos to just go through. The Warrior did stabilize very, very quickly early on. Shield block, Shield Slam very fast. Yeah. MVP of this game. Which one and is he steals the, the Shade. One? Which That's is nice the bigger. worst one? Because now it's vulnerable to swipe. Yep, it's not going to be able to live uh, because of Swipe, but I feel like you have to play Sludge Belcher here. Unfortunately, if he's got the Slud the uh, the Keeper of the Grove, the Belcher is going to do nothing. So Shield Maiden is a bit safer in that way. Alright, yep. right, so 23 health. Second force of nature. Okay, this is really tricky right now. If you're Carless... I think you have to go all in with Force of Nature and just try to burst so. that Druid down. I mean, what, what else? The Druid of the Claw and Swipe. The, the Shade? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I feel like you want to keep Swipe for when you really have to deal with a Taunt, right? A Taunt is there, you can't go through with Force of Nature, so you drop the, the Swipe at that point when you're really desperate for uh, removal. Oh, like right now, swipe. swipe is perfect. Like it's just... Yeah. Perfect damage. And now, this is the. Oh, uh, oh, oh second shield. Okay. another shield maiden. That's gonna be very helpful. It's then the again, same, same dilemma. Same dilemma, right? Like, do you play shield yeah, maiden or yeah. play sludge? I mean, if you play rag, it's a 50-50 that you're safe from force of nature. Um, but if you play sludge and you got he's got keeper, then you're still in trouble. Shield maiden, on the other hand, guarantees you've got seven extra health because you armor up afterwards. So Shield Maiden is still the better play, but you're still dead to Force of Nature Savage War very soon. Alright, I'm liking this Wrath for uh, card draw here. Definitely wants to get himself... Ah, okay. Is that going to be another Wrath for card draw for the Force of Nature Savage War? 
<laughs> I would I wouldn't be surprised. And yes, it is. Okay, the face is real. I think face so. is real. All right, but now he's. Uh... Uh, you can't even consider Alex Straza, unfortunately. You're still no. safe with the Belcher, in my opinion. But you, yeah, but you don't know that he doesn't have keeper. Oh, nice, nice, back nice, and out BGH is nice, going to kill nice, scenarios, nice. so... Really nice. You have to hope that Keeper of the Grove is not in his range right now. Because that's pretty much the only way you lose this, right? Is if you can sil- Whoa. Right, oh. right no more now? BGH. Yeah, but I think... I have no time yeah, you do play. Games. Sylvanas is amazing here, but the thing is... D2, if he develops either Rag or Sylvanas, is going to lose either of them to the BGH. Mm -hmm. But if you play... But silence, you have to kill it. You have to kill it without getting losing any value. You have to. And he does. So, I think D2 might have... It's not over yet, though. I want to say he's in a good position, but it's far from over because just a single or... Like, one or two streaks of good top decks here on Carlos's side would change the game. Wild growth. Well, <laughs> I think... <laughs> you you, this, you, know, this you could, play it. This, this could still work. Um, a Keeper of the Grove here would still be amazing. You BGH the... Innervate, oh, nice. BGH Rag, Innervate, no, 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 you have to BGH Rag and then, and then you're stuck. Mm. Yeah. Or do you YOLO Rag it? No, you can't YOLO Rag it, that is way too dangerous. Yep, there's... Well, you, you'll be counting on, on hitting the Ragnaros, so... <laughs> yeah, it's not, <laughs> Almost not the same well. outcome. Or, yeah, or the uh, Sludge Belcher, uh, I mean the uh, Sludge Belcher or Face. Because that way, if you get a Keeper of the Grove, you've got, you reach for Lethal pretty well. In either three of those circumstances. Alright, I think this is a Yellow Rag turn. Ah, oh, the Keeper, that's what he wanted last turn, pretty sure. Hmm. Still not over though. Yeah, far from over actually, he just senses the 3-5 the here. And then there's definitely if possibility hits, of lethal. Yeah, if he hits the Alex Straza, this is really... Okay, second best option. Oh, the brawl here from D2 really going to help in this position. Because um, he can almost secure that he's going to be fine at the end of the sequence. Or alternatively, he just ignores that and just trades with Rag. I think you ignore and trade with Rag. Not worth brawling here. Okay. Mm, no, 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 you have to brawl. No, no, don't do this. I mean, you, you do have the Acolyte of Pain, so worst case scenario. I mean, because he's got one card in hand, so there's no combo, right? Like, yeah. you pretty much expect there to be no combo. Um, mm -hmm. I think so, you, you go face and go pro. Maybe we're first playing Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, you, I think you just play fire, maybe Firewax to face, um, then Acolyte of Pain. Do you trade with Rag though? I think trading with Rag might be a much safer play, but it doesn't play to win, right? That's the big no, issue. No, no, I, I don't think you can allow Druid to draw more than one card and play to win. At this point, I think you just yeah. go all in and you pray. Um, because right now, that is a win condition, I believe. Eight, eleven, ten. Oh no, the top deck! Oh look, Druid winning. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, he wins by exactly one damage. Oh. <laughs> this is excruciating. Oh, Another Druid win. 6-0 in the round of two. So I'm... Oh, God. <laughs> this is absolutely crushing. Carlos and Dog going 3-0, each of them. Oh, that is crazy. Man.